Millionaires know what's what in the financial markets. Many are predicting two or three Fed rate cuts for next year, and you can bet that they already have their plans in place to leverage this information to their advantage. Check this out. Yes, I, I wouldn't characterize it as a sunny outlook. I would have characterized it more as a balanced outlook. We do expect the economy to slow, but we don't expect a recession. And so that should help bond yields to come down as well. And the fact is, we think that the Fed is done. We are also looking for recovery in corporate earnings. We saw that starting to happen with the third quarter reporting season. We think that continues into 2024. We're looking for about 9% EPS growth for next year. And that should help to support the market to continue to move higher from here. And then with bond yields coming down and the Fed ending its hiking cycle and probably pivoting to cut some time by the time we get to the middle of it next year, that should help alleviate some pressures off of equity markets valuation. And so we think that this market can go higher towards 4700 for next year. So yeah, apart from staying up to date on the latest financial happenings, have you guys ever wondered what sets millionaires apart? It's not just about the money, but the game changing habits that they swear by. These folks don't just stumble upon success. They cultivate habits that really become their secret sauce. Picture disciplined routines, relentless perseverance, and a mindset that's all about growth and improvement. These habits aren't just about piling up cash. They're a roadmap to financial freedom and the life most of us dream about. So grab a coffee and let's dive into the habits that can turn your aspirations into a reality. Habit number one, wake up early. Rich people do things differently than the average person. They find comfort in uncertainty, pursue their passions, and dedicate at least 15 minutes a day to just thinking. They also wake up really early. Take Richard Branson, self-made billionaire and founder of The Virgin Group. He wakes up at 5.45 a.m. to exercise before starting his workday. Or Square CEO Jack Dorsey, who wakes up at 5.30 a.m. to meditate and go for a six-mile jog. Branson and Dorsey aren't the only successful people who wake up before the sun. Author Thomas C. Corley did a five-year study of 177 self-made millionaires. They found that nearly 50% of them woke up at least three hours before their workday actually began. That means being flexible enough to deal with the inevitable daily disruptions, like a meeting that went too long, traffic jams, or having to pick up your sick kid from school, and still have time to accomplish everything you set out to do that day. Well, doesn't that sound nice? I mean, goodness knows how many of us raise our hands in frustration at the end of a workday because three or four things that we wanted to get done were somehow replaced by unanticipated disruptions. Yeah, I think most of us know the feeling and end up feeling helpless because of it. The solution? Wake up earlier. They say that getting up at five in the morning to tackle the top three things that you want to accomplish in your day allows you to regain control of your life. This is what you need to give yourself a sense of confidence that you really direct your life. It gives you a feeling of power over your life. Again, it puts the reins of your life back into your hands. You know what I mean? Try it for yourself. Join the 5 a.m. club. It's easier if you find someone else who would join you an accountability partner. It also helps to read up on strategies to become a morning person. Most importantly, the experts advise to start tomorrow. Yeah, makes sense. I just want to make sure that you also make time in your schedule for rest because I can't stress it enough. I see so many entrepreneurs burn themselves out. There will always be more work to do, but you only get one body. Don't make your body force you to rest because you're hustling. Also, don't forget to hang with your friends. Maintaining your social life is important. Get out of your office. Get some work done at Starbucks. Take your lunch. If you're a parent, please know when to prioritize your family. Too many rich college students lack compassion because their parents parents gave them money instead of time. Then they think dollars can solve all of life's problems. I guess what I'm trying to say here, guys, is be human. Don't just hustle. You know what I mean? If you do, then I thank you for sticking with me and watching this video. And of course, a big, big thanks for always lighting up the like button for us. Subscribing to the channel and tapping that notification bell also helps out a lot. So really, I just want to thank you guys so much for that. So going to habit number two, visualize who you want to be. Focus on the habits of who that is. In other words, it's all about mindset. So let me tell you a story. I remember having brunch with some friends a couple of years back. I remember we all didn't make a huge income at the time, living paycheck to paycheck and no vision for retirement. But they spent so much money at brunch. Me, I had the basic avocado toast with water, but it made me fully see that I needed to surround myself with people who have rich people habits. Studies reveal how rich people's mindsets is actually different from those who are not wealthy and how this contributes to their financial success. One study conducted by Brigham Young University found that wealthy people tend to have a more more positive and optimistic view of the world, while those who are less wealthy tend to have a more negative and pessimistic view. For the big thinkers out there, getting rich isn't necessarily about saving up cash. It's about creating massive value for others. For them, 
Starting a business is the fastest way to make money, while the average person sees it as being too risky. But really, if you think about it, having a 9 to 5 gig isn't a guarantee either. Plus, those who work for themselves have the power to proactively seek out businesses and increase revenue at will. Some other things that they noted. The ability to amass wealth has more to do with street smarts and savviness than the ability to memorize information and excel on exams. Building wealth takes a team effort, while the average person sees it as an individual effort. Who you surround yourself with has more of an effect on your net worth than you may think. The wealthy see making money as simple, but not necessarily easy. Money flows from ideas and problem solving, which are skills that can be learned and developed. They also believe that creative thinking is the highest paid skill in the world. As for investing, studies have shown that wealthy people tend to have a long-term view and a focus on creating diversified portfolios that generate consistent returns over time. Really, just a self-sufficiency in building multiple streams of income type of mindset. They think of money as a positive tool that has the power to create freedom and opportunity for themselves and their families. They also work for fulfillment rather than solely for money. That means focusing on work with the most fulfillment potential is the best strategy for building wealth. For wealthy people, time isn't just gold, it's the whole treasure chest. Wealthy people see time as super important because once it's gone, it's it's gone for good and you can't make any more. They know that they have a limited amount of time to reach their goals, so they use every moment wisely. They're also trying to manage their time well and focus on what really matters. And yeah, many of them are early birds. Many regular people have a file in their minds that includes both the positives and the negatives of being wealthy. But rich people are crystal clear. They really want to be wealthy. They're fully committed to making and keeping their money, doing whatever it takes as long as it's legal and ethical. So yeah, guys, mindset. While there's no one size fits all way to get rich, thinking like the wealthy definitely won't hurt you in your journey to financial freedom and success. Now, this is the part where I want to warn you about bad habits, because habit number three is taking stock of your bad habits that are not serving you. Really, just anything that's holding you back. You got to kick it to the curb. Habits are the foundation of our everyday lives. We build our daily practices and eventually our habits and routines shape us. We either build good habits that support us as we move toward our goals or bad habits that undermine our ability to achieve and succeed. One thing is for certain, it's going to be difficult to reach your dreams if you're living with a whole set of bad habits. They're neglecting your health. I always say, guys, taking care of your health is also a priority for you to enjoy your financial freedom. If you let bad health habits take over, like eating poorly or not getting enough Enough exercise or sleep, it can leave you feeling really tired, stressed, and more likely to get sick. When you're not feeling well, it's harder to stay focused and get things done. So it's not just about work. Take some time to enjoy life too. If you're always serious and working hard, you might miss out on some good stuff. It's all about finding a balance. Other things that hold most people back, self-doubt and distraction. Self-doubt is a dream killer. If you constantly doubt yourself and question whether your goals are attainable, your pessimistic feelings will become self-fulfilling. Don't let yourself get stuck in a negative thought loop. Also, stop feeding your distractions and stifling your achievements. If you're living a distracted life, your goals are being sidelined. When you find yourself bouncing from one task to another, Take a deep breath, slow down, calm your mind. This will help you concentrate and increase your productivity. You guys still with me? We're just about to get to the even better stuff. Habit number four, build your online business model, brand and image. A thriving business feeds on generating engagement. We know times are uncertain, so it's absolutely crucial for businesses to connect with consumers and stay relevant. In the last decade or so in particular, many consumers have become accustomed to finding what they want online. According to a Salesforce survey, 85% of consumers conduct research before they make a purchase online. And among the most used channels for research are websites, 74%, and social media at 38%. That means businesses and you as well need to have an effective online strategy to increase brand awareness and grow. Being online is like having a good space to talk to your customers. It's where you can tell your brand story and stand out from the competition. It's not just about your website. It's about all the places online where people may come across your brand. That includes your website. They talk about your brand on social media and what people have to say in online reviews. If you want to make a great impression, make sure everything about your brand online looks good. Now for the last millionaire habit and one that I particularly advocate, side hustle with the intention of being an entrepreneur, not just for extra cash. I have recently decided that this nine to five is not something I want to entirely depend on. 
I don't just want a cushion, I want the whole damn factory. The side hustle mindset is crucial, and to get there, all you have to do is just start. It may sound overly simplistic, but really guys, all you need is an idea and a way to make money. The next step is the hardest, which is great because everything else afterward becomes easier. You just need to start. Start small and don't be ashamed. You could start your side hustle with a simple website, a Facebook page, or post a flyer. Anything to get the ball moving. Expect your first attempt to be incomplete and not thoroughly thrown out. You will make mistakes, but that's actually helpful. Just keep the momentum going, fix the issues, and improve the business to fuel the motivation to keep going. To be a successful business, you need to be in business. Really, if you're looking to turn a side hustle into a full-time business, remember the most challenging part is getting started. So get started and get hustling. The same goes for the rest of these millionaire habits. The most important thing really is to get started. And you watching this video is already a great beginning. Props to you guys. Let's make sure to keep the momentum going. I'll see you guys on the next video.